welcome, uh, everyone. This is the beginning of our campaign from Dice Jailers. Uh, this is taking place in the world of Anenthen. Uh, it's my own creation. It is kind of Norse mythology meets uh, steampunk technology meets cyberpunk enhancements meets uh, political intrigue and such. Uh, I'm Bjorn Anders. I will be your DM for this journey. Yay, yay. Uh, and let's uh, introduce the players, starting immediately to my left. Uh, yeah, right. Camera's there. Weird. Uh, I'm Jordan Whitby, and I will be playing Kira. Hello, I'm Nathan Reed, and I will be playing Soul. Hi, I'm Jamie Master Monica, and I will be playing Hey, I'm Tanya, and I'll be I'm Phoenix, I will be playing Pohaku Kahu. I'm Casey. I'll be playing Reba Rotgut. Alrighty. Um, yeah. Without further ado. Oh, this is so hype. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world of Uninfen. Surrounded by raging storms, mysterious waters, and nearby dragons, we set our sights on the western realms. In the Viking-esque lands in the southwest of the kingdom of Eyjafjall, the massive western territory of the Thanimerian Empire, the eastern cohabitation of the realms of Stone's Fire and the Asharan Vale this is a place of conflict, of perseverance, and of tradition. Our story begins in the far north, in the wild west-esque free lands of Vagabond Assemblage. A nation of its own where one can find a fresh start or simply not be beholden to any official not chosen by the people. The Vagabond Assemblage sits proudly at the northern end of the realms. From the capital city of Port Pride to the bustling city of commerce of Ruby's Crossing, the town of Harmony Creek, where a handful of strangers are soon to encounter each other in the twists and turns that lie ahead. There is truth to the adage, straw that broke the camel's back. But this also tells us that the converse could be true. It takes merely three strands to form a braid. But that braid could be the strands that hold the world together. As the sun rises on the fifth day of the month of Slattermund, the third day, the festival of Freyr's reverence is starting. People from all corners of the Western realms have brought themselves to Harmony Creek to experience a festival known all across the continent. In one of the few rooms possible to rent in all of the town in the Dusty Boots Tavern, two individuals have awoken and begun to start their day. Nathan and Jordan, do you describe your characters, please? Hey, do you want to? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kira, uh, Kira looks to be uh, about about eighteen year old human, uh, darker skin, uh, darker skin than me, uh, with uh, dread with dreadlocks that are uh, about I'd, I'd say like yay long ish uh, that kind of spring unkempt from the top of his head. Like, he tries to do his best to keep them under control, but they're going to do what they're going to do. Uh, and he's currently wearing uh, some... He's currently wearing some longer uh, some longer robes that you would associate with... Uh, you associate with someone that is specifically training in magic uh, in the Empire. Uh, so there's, like, a little Empire crest, like, right here on the, uh, on the robe. Uh, and they're like reds and purples uh, all through the uh, all through the co all through the cloak, uh, and you also see a uh, on his shoulder is a small brown uh, bird that it looks basically like a brown roadrunner uh, that just uh, sits on his shoulder. <laughs> Menix is a gemborn, a uh, dragonborn uh, with. His history being in topaz, he has scales of a brilliant bordering on yellow orange color. Very highly polished. Stands a little over six feet tall. Wears robes of noble bearing, mostly blues and purples. His family crest is adorned on his shoulder. And he has a, a little bit of a bit of an arrogant look. And uh, Mannix, you would know um, that 
the reason you guys were able to even get this room here at the Dusty Booth Tavern, um, this is one of the this is the only place to stay in Harmony Creek. Period. Most people who come to Freyer's Reverence camp in uh, n near the town as winter is starting. As there are only two seasons, summer and winter, we're in the very first month of winter, but it's still warm enough to be outside in the evening. These rooms, um, five of them, are usually booked months and months and months in advance. However, with your noble background and your family's money and the recent news that uh, you and Kira would be coming here, you were able to bump someone from their reservation. You know they were uh, well compensated for this, probably more than enough to pay for their own campsite and all the gear they would need, but they're still probably not happy about it. But sometimes it is what it is, and money talks. But you, uh, you all have been here. This is your third day in town. You've been here since the beginning of the festival. Uh, Kira, you would know that part of the reason you're here is you heard um, some information that a um, offending uh, arcane practitioner by the name of Temagor Iron Tusk was seen near the western part of the Vagabond Assemblage, and so you had suspicions might be coming here, but it's certainly not your quarry. Mm -hmm. It's some information you have sitting on. Right. But um, the morning is yours. What do you guys think? Manix, do you want to get your usual coffee and breakfast ale? How do you know what I ate for breakfast? You don't know what I like. I mean, you... It was all in the primer that you wrote for me to make sure that... You studied it, that? You actually read it? I didn't know you could read. It, well, yeah, it's 90% of my job is to make sure that everything you need taken care of is taken care of. Yeah, I suppose. Let's go have some breakfast. A little spot point. Get us going for the day. Absolutely. And so as you guys come down into the uh, main area of the Dusty Boots Tavern, it's already... Bustling. Um, this tavern, uh, it, it's known because there are a couple of placards that say it. The reason it got its name, when it was first founded in Harmony Creek, this was sort of the one watering hole for uh, farmers to go to after working long days. And the, the first owners of it basically said, don't worry about cleaning your boots before you come in. Um, you're good, good for us. And the dust on your boots is welcome. And over time, it just became known as the Dusty Boots mm. Tavern. The current owner is a uh, human male by the name of uh, Quanda Adebayo. Uh, very dark skin, uh, has slicked back, jet black hair, uh, proudly wears a single gold earring that he always has a different story of how he uh, got it. And no one quite knows which one's true. Most people believe he probably stole it. But... Uh, he never tells the story of that. And uh, seeing you, uh, morning to you both. Um, the, the usual uh, for, for the two of you? Yes, please. I've uh, got your uh, table here uh, reserved. Your soul. Uh, compliments again to your family's generosity putting you up during this time. I hope our town's been kind to you. A very kind indeed. You know, we could read. Um... I, I have no, no thoughts on the matter one way or the other, but glad to hear it. Uh, good education is important. <laughs> good yes. Luck. Yes, it is. I haven't been going to school my whole mm. life or anything. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here's to reading, and um, breakfast is provided. Uh, go, grab your seats, and I'll have it sent over to you. Um, just coffee for you, or something a little stronger. Or do you need to take the edge off after a Bustling night last night. I know. They, I heard there were some folks here into the small hours. Yeah, they were quite loud. Uh, coffee is good for for me. You, my friend. Yeah, a little glass of ale would be be good to go along with the coffee. Happily, and so the uh, breakfast be provided for you. A couple rashers uh, of, of, of bacon, nice eggs, and everything being very fresh. This is a, mm. this is a farming town, and uh, Slackermund is. A, it's a time where the last of the harvest has just been brought in and the, the slaughter has happened. So there is very fresh um, food available for this. 
the coffee is tolerable. You think it's probably mm -hmm. been there for a while, but it is what it is. Uh, ale is uh, locally brewed, uh, very very hearty, a nice red for you. Not not as in like a red beer. The <laughs> none of none of that tomato juice nonsense. This is an actual red ale. Nothing wrong with a good Michelin. I mean, you do you, my friend. I listen. Tomato juice is just something that wishes it was my world, and that's how I will always live my life. Not going to be the first spit take on camera. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, uh, food, food in. Your belly, the, the day is yours. The festival itself, there are various uh, merchant stalls about. There are fair games. There are performances. Um, yeah, what do you guys want to do? So I assume you want to uh, show your prowess at the various games of skill, beating you know everyone as you are to do. And if you would like to know what these fair games are, it looks like a recap. Yes. <laughs> um, and I will happily, as we introduce everyone else, I'll read these again if need be. Um, there are there's an ale drinking contest, eye eating contest, there's a dancing contest, um, stump chopping, arm wrestling, slapping, horse racing. Uh, there's what's known as the uh, goblin gnome or halfling toss. Uh, go, go ahead and. <laughs> Uh, pick uh, what you wish. Uh, log tossing, magic tricks. There is the giant boar rodeo happening this uh, afternoon. The what? Yeah. Storytelling. There's the dragon race. Uh, you can try and catch a greased pig. There's the archery range. Sheep shearing. They have an insulting challenge. Huh? Um, a debate <laughs> contest. A knowledge contest. And... Yeah, all these events are happening throughout the day here at the festival. Mm -hmm. You can choose to participate or you can choose to watch. Um, you do know that it is possible not only to uh, win money and prizes, but there are also this year special tokens being given out as this is the bicentennial celebration of Harmony Creek as well. And mm -hmm. uh, this evening, there's something big planned. And whatever this big thing is, uh, you can get tokens for participation via playing games. You don't necessarily have to win to receive one of these tokens. Hmm. You know, I had such a good look the last three days. Let's keep it going. Let's do. Let's find a good one, though. The rest were not that easy. Well, that's true. Uh, you I mean, you already blazed through the insult contest, and that was fun. We don't want to mess up your clothes chasing the Greek's pig around. Uh, I, it's a, it's a. I mean, you could try to do the uh, the little folk toss. As fun as that would be, that's a little demeaning for the little people, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. I just didn't want to assume where your leanings were one way or another. I'm rather fond of little goblins, you know. Goblins are found, great. Found very, very kind and very sweet little people. And you guys would know that the uh, <laughs> the, the, the uh, little folk toss, it's uh, rag dolls that are about a small humanoid size. Um, gnomes are unbothered by their name being associated with it. The halflings find it absolutely hilarious. <laughs> uh, most of them think it's hilarious that somebody could... Uh, catch them, and the goblins just take it as a point of pride. Mm, solid. Like, they actually, like, the, 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 the collectives of goblins, halflings, and gnomes in the Vagabond Assemblage are the ones who came about to name this game. And so it's actually all the taller folk who are really uncomfortable with, with the name of it. Um, it is all smaller folk that are manning this booth. And they, especially if they see like a Goliath walk by, then they'll be like, oh, you want to you sign up for the goblin toss there, big fella? Because they know that it's going to make them very uncomfortable. It's a great way to see, it's a great way to see a Goliath blush. Oh, that's my new favorite thing. Mm. Yeah, this is not a case where the, where the, where the large folk named it. It's actually mm. in the, the Congress. I mean, they fucking owned it. We could also just uh, go gamble on the horses. Or go try and see if we can get into racing them ourselves. You know, it's been a minute since I've waited on the ponies. 
I think that would be a, 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 good, a good spot of fun. Let's head down to the track and maybe you can impress me. So if you, if you want to do the horse racing, those you actually have to ride. If you want to bet on a race where you don't have to ride something, that'd be the dragon, right? Well, it depends on if you want to get on or just make good uh, assumptions. It seems an awful lot like, like effort, and I don't know about you, I'd rather just sit and watch and, and drink more ale. So the dragon race is then. Dragon race it is. <laughs> so as you make your way through uh, fair itself, um, just both of you roll a d20 and add your intelligence. Oh, first roll with me! Yep. Finally get to break these bad boys out! <laughs> And you said add your intelligence? Yeah. That's a natural 20! <laughs> I gotta take a picture of that. That's a way to start thinking. That is so great and beautiful. Would, it's would, also would the you first... Manics? Seven! <laughs> um, you don't even need to add your... Like, which, which, Fair. So, Mannix, very confidently, <laughs> begins to stride eastward. And instantly... Uh, Kira, you know he's heading the wrong damn direction. <laughs> and you you just very, you know your own charismatic ability, but you also know how prideful this man is. Mm -hmm. And as he starts to go, you, you let me like, oh, there's something over here I really want to check out. And you, you know, you, you Mannix, you're happy to see as much of the fair as possible. You know the loser races will, will be there. And so you, you allow Kira to, to go. And you, Kira, you take a slightly meandering path, knowing... Mm -hmm. He'll lose his way just enough that he won't realize you let him completely there. So, Max, you have no idea that he completely saved you from uh, getting lost. And this is marvelous. You're quite proud of yourself there. It's just, just a couple of the, like, oh, would you look at that stall over there to redirect us? And so you, you come upon this, uh, this very large uh, tent with a long uh, table on it that resembles a racetrack. And there are uh, 12 lizards lined up. And they all have little wings uh, tied onto their back on these harnesses that are made of little twigs and leaves uh, to look like different colored dragons. And uh, there, are, there are 12 of them. Um, the, the five uh, chromatic cover colors, the five metallic cover colors, and then two uh, gem colors. There is both a emerald and an amethyst. Two gem ones you'd see there. And you can tell which color they're supposed to be by the, the saddle. Like, well, the lizards are basically all in green color. But the saddles are the different colors. And um, yeah, if you wish to enter, the entry fee is 20 silver or 2 gold. And you may select your uh, lizard. I mean, do we go with the one that... No I mean, you guys can each select yeah. it. Or you can select the lizard each if you want. Does dragons? Yeah, they're not even close. I, I'm going to be impressed by how they could capture so many dragons. Uh, it doesn't seem safe. Honestly, they would never know dragons. And, and this, this, this very large uh, half-orc woman, she's the one running in. Hey, you go to bed. You look like a couple of smart ones, don't you? I bet you know a winner when you see it. Especially you, handsome. Oh, good to see your eyes are working today. <sighs> Smart enough to know they're not real eye, fucking dragons, though. And my eyes like what they see. Do they now? Hey. Does that mean we're going to get a little bit of a discount on our, on our wages? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I think our eyes are broken. I'll tell you, if you pick the winning dragon handsome, might be something in, in it for you after the bonfire tonight. <laughs> I like the implication of that. Because when I win, I get a little extra money. Then I'm going to get a little extra on top of that. Yeah, that, uh, that, that we'll definitely see sounds like it'll be great. We'll see who's on top of what there. I get a mind out of the gutter, can't she? My goodness. Yes, yep. All right. <laughs> Boyo, you chose first. What you picking? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm just... Uh, I'll go with uh, that one, and I point to just the uh, whichever lizard closest looks like uh, it would be Manix's uh, color palette. Okay, because so, I know the 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 gem ones weren't exactly yeah. The, him, the, the but... closest would be the uh, the gold. Yeah, because yeah, the way you see it, it's yellowish color. It's, it's the gold yeah. more than the bronze. 
I'll just uh, two gold on the gold. Okay. Um, if the amethyst look, put two gold there. All right. I would like each of you to uh, make an animal handling check. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, my boy. <laughs> Still okay. Uh, 18. 18. 11. 11. Um, Mannix, your lizard does not move at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking run! <laughs> fucking run! It's not going anywhere! Hey! I was broken! <laughs> Yours, Kira, moves five feet forward. Um, yours is the only lizard that moves this way. <laughs> okay, you just make your animal handling check. Oh, what you? Gods. What'd you get? Three! Yeah. Not 20. Okay. <laughs> Yours sprints 10 feet forward. Yours, Kira, backs up at five feet. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, yeah. like it. All the rest of the lizards move another five feet forward. You currently have the lead there, uh, Manix. Go ahead and make another animal handling check, please. Five! <laughs> Five. <laughs> um, I'm not sure you have advantage on some man because you did roll that natural one. Sixteen. Sixteen. Yours moves forward another five feet. Yours, uh, Kira, is now trying to climb back to the top of the track. Itself. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> what I was wrong with mine in the first is not going to yours. All right. Animal handling, please. <laughs> natural one. Yeah. Eight. Eight. All right, yours, yours stays put. The natural one. Uh, yours, uh, Kira, it is popped up. It is now on your shoulder. Opposite <laughs> bird. He's kind of looking over at your bird. Um, the half orc proprietor is like, she's just staring at you. You're not quite sure how this game works. Huh? <laughs> uh, the other lizards are starting to catch up to yours, Manix. You have a slight lead. Go ahead and make another animal handling check. You're nearing the end of this race. Nat 20. <laughs> what? What did you get there? Seven! Yours <laughs> On your shoulder. <laughs> I've gained a friend. <laughs> Mannix, you watch as yours just charges forward across the finish line, well ahead of any of the rest of them. You are given 12 gold pieces for your victory, and you are handed uh, one of these tokens you've heard about. Whatever's happening tonight, you have entry to it. Uh, as you collect your winnings, we turn our gaze to the entrance of the town, to the warm welcome overpass, uh, a bridge that spans the Harmony Creek itself, and gives uh, anyone entering the town a view of the entire settlement, as it's a very large uh, bridge. Those coming over realize that the creek they call uh, Harmony Creek it's damn near a river, but Harmony Creek sounds nicer than Harmony River. Amongst the melange of travelers, we find a most interesting pair coming into town. Uh, Phoenix and Tanya, can you describe your characters, please? Uh, sure. So, uh, Pohaku uh, is uh, about five foot six, uh, human looking, uh, kind of reddish brown skin, um, black hair, pulled back. Um, into uh, into a of a ponytail, kind of pulled back. In. Um, dressed in what looks like kind of a simple like deer hide, uh, kind of skirt and kilt uh, type, <laughs> um, and uh, with a, kind of like a his caper cloak uh, that seems to be made kind of. A, um, leaves and other left. Um, other thing notable about reasonably heavily tattooed. Um, you can see just different black tattoos all over his arms, um, even a little bit on his face. Um, he is carrying uh, at his, uh, his hip um, two, uh, uh, two blades. One of which looks to be a wooden wooden blade with um, what looked like some sort of animal kind of set into the edge of it. Uh, the other just seems to be like a shark of some kind. And uh, yeah, the, he is looking around very wide.
through is another light and um, with a shock of bright red hair uh, swept to one side. Um, there, uh, she is wearing very well styled, made uh, leather uh, clothing that is definitely suitable for travel or light. Man doesn't look like it's been much for either, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, should the need arise, she, she is. Uh, styled for for the appropriate the appropriate task. Dark black boots that all the way. Dark black travel clothes. And is looking at just the right moment. at her neck and you two met on the train that came all the way up from the far southeastern nation of Glimmershore which is where Garnet is from um, the Whispering Wood which is this large expanse of forest that basically cuts off Glimmershore from the west of the continent <laughs> That's <laughs> that's kind of some of the sounds you might hear coming from the Whispering Wood itself of uh, the various creatures <laughs> that exist <laughs> within there. Um, the songs of the local people. What is this place? You never know what you'll hear. And that is beautiful. The first cell phone explosion. Um, but <laughs> minus fifty DKP. <laughs> But yeah, you, you encountered him on the one stop in in the Whispering Wood, and you two traveled together on the train for about a week and a half, two weeks. And it's it's a fairly lengthy train ride, but, you know, Garnet, every now and then, you kind of wanted to get off, see the sights, maybe get on the train the next day. And you were up here because uh, the Shimmerstone Mine, which is to the east of Harmony Creek, your family has a bit of a stake there. And someone has to come up and check on it every so often. And you recognize it'll be around the same time as this festival. So you eagerly uh, volunteered and also made the train ride take a bit longer than it needed to. So it's, <laughs> it, was all, it was all paid for. And so <laughs> you're, you're, you have been showing this very interesting individual around because he seemed to take quite a bit of interest just in you and your existence from meeting, and you went, what the hell? But yeah, here, here you two are. Um, you've gotten along fairly well so far as you approach the town. Uh, you're, you're familiar with the festival of Freyr's Reverence, uh, Garnet, so the, the town is yours. What do you guys want to do? Uh, okay. There are so many cool things we can do. Uh, and I forgot, I forgot to mention, because this is a fair, it is, of course, fair food to be had as well. Okay, so do you want to eat first? Do you, do you want to catch a pig first or a boar? Do you want to go watch the racing? You can bet your money on it and get more money. Let's do all of it. Okay, come on. <laughs> grab his hand and just start running to like the closest thing she can find. Okay, yes. uh, roll a d20 for me, and I'll tell you the closest thing you can find is. That's it. Six. Awesome, you find the slapping contest. <laughs> wow. no, uh... And so, uh, <laughs> you can see that there are just various uh, individuals who've been paired off against each other. And as you approach, it is the, uh, it is the finals. <laughs> uh, the, the, the current round of slaps and there are just these these two uh, very uh, muscular individuals uh, one's a uh, goliath female the other one's a, a dwarvish gentleman so the, the, the height differences are kind of amusing in how they have to try and uh, slap but she ends up reaching down and just connecting with his jaw and you watch him tumble to the ground the audience 
cheers as she has won the pot. And there's this uh, halfling uh, gentleman up for All right, now, uh, we're looking for the next round of contestants. Uh, anybody here want to sign up to slap someone in the face? Haka, you'd be so good at this. Yeah, he wants to do it. Okay, are the, uh, are the entry fees five silver? Oh, I'll pay, I'll pay for you. Here. Are, are, are you entering as well there, miss? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's all him. All right. This is his first time, so make sure he knows how to do it. Oh, very good, very good. Um, my, my friend, have you ever been slapped in the face before? Yes. Oh, good, so you know how that works. Have you ever slapped anyone in the face before? Yes. You're a natural. Oh, so, Hawker, you're going to be so good. That's how this is going to work. Um, so, yeah, how many folks we have? Oh, we've got four individuals for that card round. So, the further you make it, the more you can win. Here, uh, you, what's your name? Pohaku. Ah, Pohaku. Ah, Pohaku. Uh, Pohaku Kaku. We have you up against, uh, so you, uh, what, what's your name? Uh, Gurn. Oh my god. Oh, it's Pohaku versus Gurn. And Gurn, he is this, uh, sort of middle-aged, uh, human male. He's a little heavy set, but you can tell he's fairly strong. He's got a, uh, a sort of a, a blonde, but gray beard, uh, bald head. He's got a bunch of tattoos on him. Um, yeah, and he's, he's just wearing fairly uh, simple clothes. You, you, you can tell he's a, he's a working man. You guess maybe, maybe a carpenter. And uh, he uh, sets up, and uh, we'll roll initiative to see who slaps first. <laughs> it's going to be you, I bet. <laughs> Uh, 12. Yeah, that, that wins. So, go ahead and just make a strength check. Okay. That is going to be a 16. 16, okay. I'll make a con save against that. So, boosh! You, uh, you hit him good, and he was not ready for it. He staggers. Um, he's, he's gonna try and even this out, so here's... Just look over to Gary. Get ready, get ready! Like that. Make a constitution saving throw as he slaps you back. <laughs> Natural two. Uh, four. Four. Okay, you, you, guys, you guys are currently even as he staggers in the blood. <laughs> the, uh, the, first, the first person to get the, um, their opponent staggered mm -hmm. uh, wins. So okay. go ahead and make your next attack. Go, These are strength checks. Yes, just strength uh, 15. 15. 15. Ooh. As... Sturdy as this gentleman is, and you, you can tell, he's, he's, you hit him and he nearly falls on his feet. And he just looks at you and he just goes, nice! <laughs> and he swings back at you and, ooh, make a constitution saving throw. That is a 12. As hard as this man hits you, you just are able to stay on your feet and you look back and the, the judge <sighs> raises his hand in your direction. Pahaku advances! Woo! And um, Gurn, Gurn reaches out and uh, shakes your hand. <laughs> well done, well done. Now, this is a good you better time. win this thing. Yeah. And so, uh, up what next. What happens when I win? Uh, if you win, well, do you, do you like mead? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, from your standard to possibly win a barrel of it. <gasps> That's good. That sounds good. But up next, you're going to have to take on, uh, what, what was your name Can again? I get one for her too? Well, you'll have to win again. Okay. So um, up next, uh, you're going to have to take on this here individual. And uh, stepping forward, you will see a, uh, a Goliath female, uh, <laughs> different than the other one you saw. This is... To, you'll have to defeat our local champion, Marshall Ankara Steelbreaker. Oh, that's a fucking name. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this, friend. Got this. She goes, <laughs> why don't you take the first? She just extends her chin a little bit. You can take advantage on this. Okay. She's feeling very confident. Uh, 15. Okay. Ooh, you stagger her. <gasps> and you can see a little blood actually trickles down off her lip. She did really good, and she 
kind of reaches out with her tongue, flexes it, just, that. Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, uh, 30, 20. Natural one. <laughs> so, you watch, she, she primes for this. You were stronger than you looked. And she swings so hard, she actually loses her balance slightly. <laughs> and only the tips of her fingers catch you. And she's just standing there kind of stunned. And before the, the, the carnival barker for this can say anything, she grabs your wrist and holds it there, <laughs> points at you as everyone begins to cheer. Bo ha ku! Bo ha ku! Bo ha ku! Bo ha ku! And you start doing a little dance with this. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first defeat Marshall Steelbreakers ever incurred here. Well done. Oh, it's the first time I've met her. Oh, I like you. I like you. And so, a. I will share some meat with you. I really like you. Oh. Now, I like it here. the barrel isn't like a big old full size wine barrel. Oh, it's that's too bad. It's, 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 I mean, it's about the size of your torso. Oh, okay. So it, it, it's good size. It's not like a St. Bernard uh, <laughs> barrel, but it doesn't come to your waist or anything. But you're, you're given this barrel of mead, and you're also handed uh, one of these tokens. Excellent. And I will, uh, if she has some sort of a, uh, you know. You're also given your entrance fee of five silver back. Oh, I hand it over to, uh, hand that over. Uh, yes, I am. Actually, quite intelligent. Um, How's that wisdom? Oh, not so good. <laughs> there it is. Um, well, this is this is new. This is what people do here. Isn't it great? I slap you. Make a dexterity saving throw. Should I should I roll anything? Or? Well, we'll see. We'll see about that deck save first. D- DC fifteen. Awesome. <laughs> um, make an unarmed attack. Whatever your unarmed attack modifier is. Uh, that's a natural one. <laughs> You have just been uh, slapping with a Goliath, yeah, and now you try and go and slap a gnome. So my hands a little. Off. Yeah, you, <laughs> you haven't entirely course corrected on it. So uh, Garnet, uh, made you, love. You, <laughs> you get what he was going for, and you you sort of understand. Okay, this is you know this is a bit of a little Connecticut, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's court here. He doesn't quite understand the rules of the road on all things, so you don't take it personally at all. But you're also not upset that he completely whiffed. Is this how we, is this no. how we do things? No. Um, no. That was a contest. You only do the slapping when you're part of the contest. Okay. You okay. don't just slap people. Oh, I can do that. Okay. I Especially mean, me, your best friend. Got it. I mean, I've never done that before. Well, don't do it again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And so, uh, Where, would you like to try? I mean, they, they, they gave me a bit. Well, you saw how tall she was. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But still, no. Okay. <laughs> Let's go get food. I need something to pair with. This, this. <laughs> and so, you. You make your way uh, along through the uh, fair itself, finding all sorts of stalls of various kinds of fair foods. Uh, between the two of you, go ahead and mark off one silver for the various foods uh, you encounter. Like the equivalent of funnel cakes and meat on sticks. And everything is delicious and extravagant. And everyone is in a very delightful uh, mood. Um, lastly, we keep our gaze within the fair itself, where numerous merchants are they're either finishing setting up their stalls or they have already set up their stalls as everything is in full bustle. 
from farmers to tanners to butchers to food stands to games to everything else, all manner of goods can be found for purchase in a prime location near the center of the fair. The wares of the blacksmith had been set up by a halfling man and two others. Jamie and Casey, if you would describe your characters, please. Okay, I'll go. Um, see a um, see a redheaded woman, uh, five foot nine. So she's strong. She looks strong, and um, has dark red kind of Irish setter hair in long braid down the back. What's the weather like? It's uh, it's it's sunny. It's a, it's a very very bright. Vibrant day. Um, there was a little frost left over from the night before. Even though we're just coming out of summer, going into the very beginnings of winter, like what we would think of as you know, fall, you're in the far north of the continent, so it gets cold there early when the sun goes down. Okay. Uh, well, then she's probably wearing long sleeves, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, pushes them up at all, or if you see when she turns, she has. Swirling tattoos that uh, you can see on her forearms and a whole white spectrum. Well, you can probably only see. Oh, I'm going to put a picture of her. Uh, she has these like, very swirling tattoos and they start, like this one's kind of bluish, purplish, um, trailing off into the sleeve, or bluish, trailing off, and then the one kind of Pink, but we know how much of her is tattooed. So you can see those. And uh, the other notable. She is accompanied by a very tall half orc woman, uh, well over six feet tall. Despite the cold weather, she is wearing a leather vest. Everything she wears is a bit scruffy, but well taken care of. A uh, leather vest to show off arms that. They've got more beef than Arby's, and uh, <laughs> a cloak on top of it to compensate for those bare arms in this warm weather. She's got a black mohawk, a lot of piercings on the face region, ear piercings, nose piercings, all that. Uh, no tattoos, but uh, a, a lovely shade of green skin, um, and yellow eyes to pair with it, and I think that about sums her up. And uh, at this uh, stall with the two of you is um, Siobhan, your uh, brother, at least it was uh, Kieran? Kieran. Yeah, the, the eldest brother of the family said, Hey, you know, I thought I said you two were to go have some fun here. And I'm the stall completely today. You know, I'm, I'm looking for, I think, I think I can sell more than I did yesterday. And I don't need anybody's help to do it. I'm telling you, I'm going to prove, I'm going to prove that it is my duty, and it will be my honor to eventually take the family business over. I'm going to show Pa. I'm the one who knows how to do things, so I don't want you showing me up, Siobhan. Uh, at some point, one has shifted so that she's slightly behind him. Not the word. Uh, <laughs> variations on this same speech. Word for word. In fact, <laughs> you also Reba, have heard variations on this every day that you guys have been here. Has it always come true? Ah. <laughs> uh, Ish. I mean, um, Kieran is very good at what he does. He's he's a stick in the mud when it comes to fun. He is about he is about uh, profit for family. He's a good businessman. He's a very honest businessman. Um, not as good as his father, Calm, who is one of the most personable people in the world, who you know well, uh, who also gave you some money and gold. I believe it was that you were instructed to make sure Siobhan had fun at this fair. Um, and Calm, the father, also told you that Kieran is a lost cause when it comes to having fun. And if he insists on just manning the stall, just let him do it. Because you are not going to drag him away to go play fair games and that he'll actually have a better time if he's just uh, peddling wares. Um, Colm Finnegan is a incredibly well-renowned blacksmith, not just throughout the Vagabond Assemblage, but even through some of the bordering cities nearby nations. He is universally respected. 
His work is second to none. And he's the kind of man that you don't cross him. Not because like, not, not like he's like a, not like a mafia dog. It's not like, oh, he'll hurt you or anything. But because of how many people respect him and adore him, if he decides he's not doing business with you anymore, there are so many other people that will follow suit just out of respect to him. Because if you wronged him, you must have done something wrong. And you're very much on his uh, good side. Despite what happened almost a year ago when you first came to the assemblage, but you're very much in his good graces these days. Yeah, you are instructed with making sure um, his uh, adopted daughter here has a very good time. <laughs> Kieran. Kieran, got it. That's yeah. right. Uh, but Kieran, I hate to not let you go off and have how much you've been looking forward to. to oh, let's see. I look, I look too rude. Uh, Reba. Um, well, I saw, what was, it, what was this, the, the story we saw yesterday about people being interested in? Was it, um, uh, oh, I think, was it the slapping? No, no, it was something, something much more, I think you could sing, you know, yes. a, a dancing, there was a dancing festival. I thought that would be. Oh, if Kieran's anything, he's a dancer. Yeah. Through and through. You want to dance, Kieran? Mm -hmm. We'll take a shift. Don't worry about it. Seriously. <laughs> I don't dance. What? I don't sing, and what? I certainly don't slap. Oh, this is all brand new information. <laughs> no need to be the life of the party, you are. Oh, so what, 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 are you, what are you going to do? Go maybe drink some ale? You want to go chop some stumps or something? Look at him, he's know. all ready for the insult contest. <laughs> Come on, get up. If they're still doing it when I close up, I just might do that so long as I can be paired up with Sean here. I don't think it'd be fair. You've been training for years now. You're not wrong. You know how to stay on the good side, don't you? You have a good side. You've not seen it. You're hilarious. I know. Thank you very much. Well, I think it's the same side as his good angle. <laughs> should, should I, uh... Are you, are you family now, all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, listen, I was instructed to make sure that your sister had fun, and this is clearly fun for her, so, you know, I'll make yes. a sacrifice. Yes, I'm enjoying it quite, yeah. <sighs> you both are getting on my last nerve. Alright, well, um, and this is actually more of a DM question, yeah. I think. Would it be weird for me to warn to her walking around with No, her? people are, people are walking around with their, their weaponry. It's not... It's, it's, it's not uh, a strange thing to see someone walking with any sort of weapon, considering this is, this is a sword and sorcery uh, campaign and world. So it's, it's not like, oh, I have to be armed at all times just in case something happens. But carrying it, it's like, no, you'll, you'll have it for any number of reasons. It might just be you're, you're a soldier by nature or you're a cell sword, so you want to have your, your uh, stuff with you. Or perhaps you own something that was made by a blacksmith, much in your case, that you do wear your weapon. In case anyone asks about it, be like, oh yeah, here's who made it. So if you need a good weapon made, like it's, it's walking advertising yeah. for, for something. Okay, so for that reason, wearing her. Cool. Or her made it. Very nice. All uh, right. Uh, uh, Humorless brother. <laughs> All right, we'll give you a spec then. Just, I mean, let me tear down at the end of the night before the bonfire happens. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, much. Have fun, Siobhan. Do me best. Appreciate it. He, he nods his head over Reba. Keep this one out of trouble. And he gives you a little wink, Reba, to show he doesn't mean anything. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Point of honor and pride. Really need to go to the halfling. I've been training for it my entire life. Lead the way. That's what's fun. Lead the way. Excellent. As soon as you go through this, I'm like... Oh, yep. So, out front, there is a... Uh, the, the Barker is a goblin. All right, now, step right up. Step right up. Who wants to toss the little folk? Who wants to toss the bed? You do, you big fella. And, like, two people are making eye contact. And as you come by, he sees that you're both strong... Oh, 
Two powerful ladies coming up. You gotta toast the wee folk ladies. Okay. What she said. Oh, yeah, both are gonna you both want to play. Well, one at a time. Like some friendly competition? Who's going first? Uh, after you. Okay. It'll cost you one silver apiece. I can just not stretch to that. Alrighty. So, to do this, um, there are these uh, rag dolls and you can basically tell by the color of the rags and what they're wearing, which ones are supposed to be which. Uh, obviously, the ones that have, you know, like green heads. Those are the uh, goblins. Um, the roundish ones are the halflings and ones that have extra things tied on for like longer ears and slightly longer limbs. Uh, Siobhan is slightly thrown off and disappointed that they're not actual halflings. Uh, <laughs> but she takes a... Uh, uh, like, Reba fully clocks this. Like, I'm doing this with your brothers and you like well. Since I was six. So you, um, you get three throws. Okay. There are three different uh, targets you can uh, aim for. There is a very large uh, target fairly close to you, a slightly smaller one a little further away, and yet another smaller one a little further away. You are going to make improvised ranged attacks for these. So it's a d20 plus your dexterity modifier for it. And so you get to choose... Oh, that was a <laughs> I will let you do dexterity as a straight roll, or you can do strength at disadvantage. It's already going to throw me off because I'm just using you know, the actual weight of them. They hold on to you and they can do that. Who did you do this to? The brothers. You've met Rory, he loves it. So what, what are you doing? Are you doing dex or strength or disadvantage? Uh, strength or disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. Risk it for the biscuit. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I'm going to aim at the one, I guess. You're going to aim for the, for the, for the big hole? <laughs> um, the easy one? I'll do the easy one first, because again, I'm just easy. really thrown off. I'm used to, you know, Rory kind of like okay. pushes off. And, Excellent. Like, Oh fuck! That's <laughs> nineteen and twenty. So <laughs> plus strength. You don't need, yeah, no problem. You don't even hit. He's very agile. No problem. Uh, that gives you one point. Uh, second throw. Fourth map. Uh, this, yeah. yeah, I will. Um, I, I'll aim for the. Okay. Uh, so that's good. That is a fourteen. Fourteen is good enough for that, and just. Right on in. That gives you two points. You have a total of six. I'm sorry, a total of three. Total of three. All right, so this is the hardest Going one. Going for that new math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, balls. Okay, and that is a 12. 12. Uh, not quite. You throw for the furthest one away, and it almost goes in, sort of herons off, and so... Yeah. Ah, not bad. Not bad here. Uh, for that, and uh, this box full of a bunch of wooden toys are brought out. You can have your choice. And there are all, all manner of very well-crafted wooden toys in there. Like various wooden dolls, animals, uh, you know, toy weapons and whatnot. Looking for one that looks like... Um, give me a d20 plus intelligence. That's great, too. <laughs> 18. 18? Uh, you know what? You find a dog-shaped one, and that's... Um, yeah, you would say this is very corgi esque You find it quickly. Very, very well done. So you, you, you take that. Um, Reba, you are, you are up. Um, you can either make this as dexterity or you, it's a d20 plus your dex mod or d20 plus your strength mod at disadvantage. Your choice. You get three throws. There are the three different targets and you can choose any target as many times as you want. For the sake of role play, she has to go strength. Love it. Really. Love it. Which target are you going for? I'm going to go for the furthest one. Okay, love it. Yep, that's going to be a 11. Mm, it just goes a little wide of it. Same throw. She's going to go for the furthest one. Love it. Cocked. That's going to be a, a nat one plus two. Is a three? Nat one. <laughs> You go to hurl it and just right behind, just backwards yeah. over your head. But like um, really far. Oh yeah. I just, just, <laughs> it's like a wee bowling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
strap. You, you can hear just, <laughs> oh, oh, what happened? You can, somebody <laughs> just got <laughs> by this. Yeah. I just heard, Shavon! <laughs> Be careful! <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir. I knew we spun like that. Oh, okay. You're gonna you gonna see if you can get your third one into one of the holes there. Yeah, I, I got this one. Okay. She's gonna go for the furthest one. Do it. That's uh five. <laughs> All three of them. This we're missing very very widely, and um, this this individual going. Still like your enthusiasm. Uh, very nice try. Would would either of you like to try again? Absolutely not. Uh, Siobhan? Uh, you, you both feel like you have enough of a hang of it now that I would let you do strength. Great roll. Uh, yeah, I'll give it another roll. All right, so pay another silver, and uh, you may attempt once again. Oh, I'm on the look. Okay. Because uh, uh, I didn't declare which one I was throwing at. I'm going to go for, for this one. Okay. D20 plus strength. <laughs> That's nine points. Misses by a bit, but you're, you're getting the hang of it. Uh, second throw. All right, all, all my throws are good. Yep. First throw. Oh, for fix, say it's a 15. 15 is just enough. As yes. it, doom, right. Well done now. One throw left. What is this now? For the last one? Uh, balls. Well, I can offer you another one of those uh, wooden toys there. Or I can give you all uh, two pieces of candy to share amongst you. The freshest honeycomb. You're given two very fresh pieces of honeycomb. And I tell you what, I like your style. He hands you one of these tokens. Because <laughs> yeah. otherwise we couldn't get into the next part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> no. Siobhan. Not at all. I told you you didn't have to win to get this. Thanks for being so nice to my beautiful friend here, yeah? She is easy on the eyes. Yeah, you're gonna be at that bonfire tonight? I might be, why are you asking me? No, just on behalf of someone I know. What do you think, Siobhan? Uh, Siobhan is doing what basically what I'm doing, like my ducking his head totally away. I'm just making sure she has fun, or does her father, you know? You're a good kind of friend to have. Ah, oh, don't I know it. One takes back the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, we're leaving, we're leaving, we're leaving. Come on. Uh, leaving the, uh, the little people toss, uh, what else would you guys like to do here at this fair? Uh, specifically? Yeah. Um, I can also read off the fair games again. That's only that one. I know, but people found out of, you know, like going to food stall and all that. What time of day is it? It's still fairly early. It's, it's, it's morning, um, probably around like nine. But the fair is bustling, but it's sort of like just started. I think I just kind of want to walk the calm floor, as it were. All right. So uh, going around, you you do see some very uh, interesting things uh, about just the the, the various uh, games. You you are very impressed by the strength of some of the people who are doing the uh, stump chop. Like some very powerful individuals. Um, the the insult contest is always fun to walk by to hear the various things that are shouted out. You you pass by two individuals, a uh, dark skinned human male wearing very bright robes, and you're surprised to see this uh, dragonborn, clearly of nobility. Um, not that dragonborn are extremely uncommon in the assemblage, but seeing one who is clearly noble and not from these parts, uh, stands out to you. And you end up actually over by the uh, slapping contest where you see this very tattooed uh, humanoid male carrying about this uh, barrel and this uh, young woman who is just very enthusiastic uh, about everything. And they're just leaving there, heading over to find some uh, fair food. Uh, Annex and uh, Kira, what was your next destination? Well, first, I just have to get, uh, if you want to call your lizard back, uh, <laughs> I can't make him disappear. Like, 
and they whistle better than I can. And the wizard just <laughs> right on to the, uh, the whistle. Yeah, just I am. We'll, we'll, we'll fix it in post. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't like your little friend there? I mean, he's obviously got a job to do. Definitely being obviously? amazing at running in these races. <laughs> I don't know how you can say obviously he's got a job when he was really good at hanging out in your shoulder there. I mean, some people just don't like to do their jobs, but they still have the job to do. Nice, fair point. Uh, well, now that you've got your winningest winnings, I mean, obviously you were going to succeed at picking the right uh, dragon to run the race. <laughs> you being the smart one, I'm, like, I'm just glad that you finally have acknowledged it. Absolutely. It took a while, but and he's, and Kira starts to absentmindedly just pull out his spell book. <laughs> and just so, uh, where would you like to go next? Uh, Rumbly and the Tumbly, or should we go get some more shenanigans? You know, I've always wanted to try one of those elephants. Oh, we'll have to get after those because I've heard they are delicious. And you, it doesn't take you long uh, going through the uh, the stalls here, where you do find one of the uh, jerky. Stalls, and they do have, and it's in sections. You know, elephants are big, mm. but is this actual <laughs> <laughs> elephant ear uh, jerky? And um, you know, it's, it's in a strip about yay, yay long. Um, no, it's it, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Uh, wouldn't that be great? Uh, it is one of the. It's an elephant ear, like like we know. It's wonderful. Um, it's actually much more. It's 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 similar. To uh, in taste and get this to like fry breads, so it's a little more savory, less less the sweet kind. But um, yeah, you each uh, get one of those. Go ahead and just mark off one silver between you guys for sure for this yeah. as you uh, indulge on the uh, local culinary delights. And uh, surprisingly, you find yourselves having more fun than you thought you would. Um, you uh, Mannix. Again, you're going along with Kira because you believe there are things he can eventually help you with. And uh, Kira, you sort of hoping that your uh, that your information will be of use. Yeah, as... I'll be the entire time just keeping an eye out, really for uh, not only uh, uh, not only uh, for for uh, Timagar, uh, but also just looking for. Anyone who is using bad magic. Make a perception check. Cool. Uh, nope. Uh, let's see. Nine, maybe. What is the perception of this character? Ten! Ten. Um, there are things uh, you perceive. It's none of that. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Largely what you notice is sort of the, the, a lot of the next round of games that are getting that up. Mm -hmm. You see where, as it's getting starting to inch close to, to you know, midday, definitely ale drinking contests and pie eating contests being uh, set up. You wonder if there are many who will do that and then move on to the dancing contest. And you mm -hmm. are horrified for the implications of what that would entail. But the next portion of the day is likely to be ahead. You did hear that there would be the uh, boar rodeo, and you can, you all can hear one of the uh, barkers shouting out this uh, dwarvish gentleman. All right, hey, for those who are interested in the uh, giant boar rodeo, that will be taking place here. Oh, in I say about two hours time. So make sure you've got your resolve strengthened. Make sure you've contacted your next of kin, just in case. And let's see who's brave, who is strong, who is talented, and who wants to win the prize. Or not. You can just sit in the stands and watch people try and get to see them get tossed about by the board. Either way, will it be a good time for me? And I'll, I'll cast press digitation to just knock a few crumbs off of uh, off of Manix's, like clothes <laughs> from the from the fry bread. Should we go fight a boar or wrestle a boar? I guess. I mean, I I think I'd like to. I need something to get over the disappointment that an elephant is not an actual elephant's ear. Uh, yeah, I was looking forward to some jerky as well, but I 
I mean, we can find regular kinds of jerky, but I figured a fair. It was a tasty treat. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but at least Mbani likes uh, likes this bread, and I put a a little bit up to Mbani, my bird. (laughs) Just chows it down. Yeah. I mean, it's a very interesting type of bird. <laughs> Do I have a beak? <laughs> I mean, it's it's a little hammer cop. Like it's yeah. <laughs> it's a it's, it's a little interesting creature. And, and yes. as it does, it's every now and then like these little sparks uh, mm-hmm. pulsate off of it. Uh, let's head over and see this boar rodeo, and let's give it a shot. I'm curious to see what's like. I wonder how big the boar is. Got to be bigger than this dragons. Well, it's definitely not going to be bigger than anything that Aunt Holly has butchered. And then uh, the rest of you <laughs> hearing some of these announcements. Any uh, plans for you for the next leg of this fair? Sure. Right. Set us up. Well, it's the <laughs> so uh, sure. you all find yourselves heading towards where this great boar rodeo will be. And uh, take a little break. We'll awesome. pick up there soon. Thank you for watching this episode of Dice Jailers, the campaign that is yet to be named. Please follow us on Facebook and on Instagram and follow our YouTube channel where our episodes will be up the Monday after they're aired. Thank you and catch you next time.